the uh, all the noise in the world began was created for just for my benefit, and I got as close to the floor as I possibly could, where they were shooting on a plane that was flying overhead. Eventually, I learned that we shot down two planes that morning, one of theirs and one of ours, and killed both pilots. Uh, they were sort of a trigger happy because the Japanese insignia was a red circle. The American plane insignia, insignia were a blue circle on a white star superimposed upon it. And right in the center of that white star was a big red circle. So they were sort of a trigger happy to fire at anything that you saw bearing red. We had to get all of our equipment together and set out for our pre-assigned battle station, which turned out to be football stadium at Roosevelt High School. To get there, we had to clear an area between Schofield and uh, Pearl Harbor called Kipapa Gulch, just a big cleft in the ground. But once we were on the other side, or the Pearl Harbor side of the gulch, uh, there was nothing but sugar cane between there and sea level. But the sky was full of very dense black smoke. Periodically within that smoke, you can see there on the right, a deep orange flame would erupt either from an internal explosion or if we had been down there at the time of the attack and been from a bomb explosion, it hadn't been dropped from a, a dive bomber. But uh, we continued on to our particular battle station, got there, set up a communication with our outlying battalions, which were in the Waikiki Diamond Head area. And uh, about 4 o'clock that afternoon, military law was established. They also established a curfew, sunset to sunrise. If you were caught on the road, Your Honor, without proper authorization, you were hauled before a military court. And the sentence from a military court be anything from three days to three years to 30 years. If you were innocent, however, as well as guilty, you did give a pint of blood before you were released. I stayed uh, there until I was sent to the University of Hawaii to become a radar technician and uh, served in the Phoenix Islands where it was near about 600 miles to the east of the Gilbert Marshalls which were under Japanese control so for eight months we were periodically a, a target for their bombing runs. I eventually got back to the mainland, went to school for about eight years, got a degree in chemical engineering, came back to Hawaii where I've now lived for 56 years. Thank you. somewhere between three and four o'clock where you are. It's very early here. I'm Command Sergeant Major Sterling Arkale, U.S. Army retired. I was born on November 29, 1921, down on the farm in Macomb, Illinois. So I spent all of my early years there on the farm. <clears throat> but suddenly my father got a job in Moline, Illinois, at John Deere Plow Company. So I started my high school education in Moline. I had just started when one of the uh, recruiting sergeants came down from Chicago, Illinois, and said, anybody want to join the Navy? And I said, yeah, I do. And he said, what do you want to be? And I said, well, I want to go into lighter than air training in Lake Hurst, New Jersey, the dirigibles. I don't want to be a ground pounder in the Army. He said, sure, we'll sign you up. So I continued in school there at high school, but unfortunately, 1937, the pride of Germany, the von Hindenburg, came in and it was tying up. It suddenly caught fire, blew up, and burned. There went my Navy training in the light of the air, no dirigibles. So I continued in high school and graduated in 1939, January Division. Great Lakes from our training. After completing training at Great Lakes, they said, well, Cale, no lighter than air. We're going to send you down to San Diego, California for hospital core school. So I'm down in San Diego. I graduated number two in my class. Oh, boy, I'm going back to Illinois now. <laughs> 
first guy went back to Illinois and they said, well, Cam, you have your choice of worldwide assignment. I said, hell, I'm a far boy from Illinois. I was already worldwide down in California. <laughs> he said, what do you want to do? I said, well, I don't know. I said, I remember there's a little island about 2,000 miles off the United States out in the middle of the Pacific. And I hear they have beautiful girls on the assignment. <laughs> well, that's one of those beautiful girls. Well, fortunately, that's my wife, 65 years, and we got married in December 1942. But I also heard some of them may even have grass skirts, and they may live in grass shacks. And I said, hell, give me Pearl Harbor. <laughs> called the USS Brazil. Boy, that thing, the diesel oil tanker was so old they didn't even have bunks. We had to hang our hammocks down below and we lived down there. So about the second day out in the middle of the ocean and they came on and said, well, Taylor, okay, you're going to paint the mast. Paint the mast? <laughs> that thing is up there about 30 feet. <laughs> I'm far more from Illinois, don't forget that. And they hauled me up in the bosun chair and I get way up in the top and it's a beautiful day, about 115 degrees, loaded with oil and we're rolling back and forth. Boy, I threw up on one side of the ship and I hit the mast and come over and throw on the other side of the ship. Oh, down, said, they never get the mast painting, they're painting the ocean instead. And finally, we got out to Pearl Harbor in the 19... Guys should blame me on the table and start my piano.
it during the interview.